I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I'm Coach Victoria and in this video we're going to be talking to you about do avoidant give second chances? This is a very common question that we get and I do want to remind you that me and Craig are available for one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions if you are interested in talking about your situation with us. Absolutely, just sign up on the website, we'll be happy to help you out. You know, I've been talking about attachment styles since I launched the channel many, many years ago because I have found it to be very helpful in understanding relationships and simplifying our connections. You know, oftentimes, you know, I really for centuries, people have been finding love so incredibly confusing and complicated. But when you start to understand how we attach, it makes love so much easier to understand. Now, when people start to learn about attachment styles like anxious or avoidant attachment style many people will say oh well avoidants don't care they don't come back they don't give second chances and it's simply not true mm -hmm. so be careful about where you get your information from because many people just say whatever they want to say uh, maybe it's toxic or immature advice you have to remember that the reason that people became avoidant is because of how they were treated starting as an infant, starting as a baby, okay? This is a developmental arrest. This is things that happen to us in the first few years of our life. You don't wind up an avoidant because life was great until you were 20 and then you had a bad breakup. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it just doesn't work like that. And Margaret helped me understand this many, many years ago. We talked about this weekly, mm -hmm. understanding mental health and how mental health and attachment issues really go together. So when you're trying to consider your situation and you're thinking, okay, I have an avoidant and you start searching, do avoidant exes come back? You're going to see toxic stuff out there that's mm -hmm. quite frankly a little bit scary sometimes because it's really about somebody that is struggling to connect with other people their mental health their inability to trust that was formed from their early childhood but it doesn't matter it mean that these people can't find love and miss a connection with somebody right. there is a lot of information out there that does demonize the avoidant attachment style and in this video, we are going to talk about, you know, demonizing them. We're going to talk about demonizing them. Let's do it some more. <laughs> <laughs> no, in this video, we're going to talk about how attachment styles do manifest differently for different people. And, you know, even though the avoidant attachment style can impact their partner and can make, cause their partner to feel neglected, you know, even then they still have that primal need for connection, mm -hmm. for attachment, for for bonding with someone and That's a lot right. of times it can be so hard to believe because they come off so cold because they come off so distant and because they may have even hurt us so as you're watching this video i want you to have an open mind and try to see things from a different perspective and the other thing you want to keep in mind is that not everybody is the same amount of avoidant mm -hmm. or anxious there it's like a spectrum and your behavior can also influence that and you know, not pressuring them could often help them be less avoidant. Right. Right. So it's not set in stone that everybody is exactly like this. There's like more like a spectrum. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And while it is true that for avoidance, it will take them longer to really process the breakup to grieve it. They still do give second chances. They yes. still do experience emotions. They still do experience grief. And this is important for you to understand because a lot of times we see online people 
using the words avoidant attachment style and narcissist or different other personality disorders synonymously. Okay, an attachment style is not descriptive of a personality. Mm -hmm. It's more descriptive of how you connect with others, more specifically in the romantic relationship setting and in the relationship with your caregiver. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be clear on that too. Yeah, you can say that an avoidant is a narcissist, but not guaranteed, but you can say, yes, a narcissist is avoidant. Right. There's a difference right. in understanding that you can be slightly avoidant, you know, more like somebody who's like a fearful avoidant, that they're not so angry and dismissive, mm -hmm. and then you have more dismissive avoidant people down the scale. Right, right. So there's many different ways of looking at it and many different configurations of mental health issues, and attachment styles. And I wanted to say real quick, yes, dismissive avoidance do come back too. Mm -hmm. And that can be extremely hard to believe mm -hmm. because they can come off the coldest. You just have to have a lot of emotional self-control to be with one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Makes a lot. <laughs> exactly. The catch to all of this is if they are given enough space and time to experience the anxiety of also missing you. Yes. And I say that because if you make yourself constantly available to your ex, they are not going to experience that type of anxiety that's really required for them to even process their emotions on the breakup, for mm -hmm. them to experience the breakup. Yeah. They will just experience that reach out, you're you know, trying to communicate with them and connect with them as an intrusion, as something that's interfering with their life. You know, and for them, their way of processing is very different. You know, they can compartmentalize very, very well. And so for you, you're on the other end of this breakup thinking, man, this is the only thing I can talk about. This is the only thing I can think about. I just wanna fix it and I wanna fix it now. So you can have an urgency and impatient that, an impatience that your ex just doesn't have. That's right, they don't operate like that. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden the anxiety can overwhelm them one day and they become like the anxious person. Yeah, yeah. But it takes time to get there. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, we've also talked about the phantom ex. So this is when you are dating somebody who is more avoidant and they're pining after their past relationship. And I say this because your ex may have moved on, they may be with someone else and still be fantasizing about the idea of being with you now that they're less available. Mm -hmm. It sounds really counterintuitive. You'd think, why are they more attracted to me now that they're less available and can't date me? Or now that there's something in between us. But that is how the attachment style works, you know? Because they can't get overwhelmed with the closeness. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But when you're going through this, I mean, many of you have not even heard of attachment styles before your breakup. Mm -hmm. Then you come to our channel and you're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's It's really eye-opening. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. It changes your life once you understand it. Exactly. So you just have to understand that avoidance do get easily overwhelmed. Okay? And if they're stressed, and there's a lot going on, maybe a lot of responsibilities or obligations, that makes them often shut down even more. And if you don't give them that space, they're likely gonna push you away to get it, okay? And, and a dismissive avoidant will really get mean and hurtful and cold, especially to get it, mm -hmm. right? To force it. So when avoidance do come back and they are considering a second chance, it's usually because you've given them so much space that they've missed you, they've really felt the pain of the breakup, and now they're uncomfortable with losing you. And the interesting thing that avoidance often do is they act like the breakup never even happened. And it's infuriating because you think, <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I crazy? Did I just imagine all of this happened? You know, are we not going to acknowledge the hurt and pain that was involved in breaking up? Mm -hmm. It can be a total shock to see them act so nonchalant about something that you have been devastated over for months, sometimes longer. Yep, they will just come back mm -hmm. anxious, all of a sudden wanting to blow up your phone and talk to you like you were, like the breakup never happened, like it hasn't been five months. Mm -hmm. And then they start telling you everything. They start telling you everything that's been going on in their life and, and just opening up about everything and things that you've had little 
tidbits of information about all along, you're hearing it all. Mm -hmm. And they're just spilling it. And you would be so surprised with how comfortable and vulnerable somebody with a more avoidant attachment style can feel in that kind in of safe moment. Yeah, in that yeah. moment and in that safe <laughs> yeah. environment when they, where they think and, and expect you to be able to give them that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's confusing when it happens and it's overwhelming and it's going to produce a lot of anxiety and you're not going to know kind of how to handle it. So you got to take it slow. Don't be eager. Okay. You need to see that they're going to try and really work to get you back. If they're working to get you back, it's going to be a lot more likely to be in a healthy way. If you just take them back right away, now they don't feel that true need to change or do anything different. Right. So you got to kind of hold them accountable and take it slow. But yes, avoidance do come back. And they do give second chances, even if they're dismissive avoidance. No, you don't have to reach out to them. No, you don't have to chase them. They will reach out. I don't care what other people say. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. Okay? Yeah. And the bottom line is that those with avoidant attachment styles are human. We all have that primal need for connection and to be able to bond with others. You know, this is really deeply embedded into who we are as people and how we feel safe. And so no matter how avoidant they are, they still have that need, you know? So keep that in mind, use that as reassurance if you need, but also note, you know, it doesn't mean that how their avoidance affects you is okay either, <laughs> okay? Absolutely. So avoidance can and do get attached. They can reconsider relationships, but I also believe that they can change. <laughs> they know? have to want it. They have to want they it. They have to want it. And I get people, I get avoidance all the mm -hmm. time that are doing the creative healing course and the workbooks and they're genuinely interested in working on themselves. So avoidance do really care and they do really want to repair things. Mm -hmm. It's just that they, they don't like being pressured into doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name at the top of the website and you can schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.